Hello and welcome to another DIY Engineers video. In this video, we'll be going over the rotary encoder and how to use it. A rotary encoder is a sensor used to determine the angular position of a rotating shaft. In this video, we'll go over how to connect the rotary encoder to your Arduino, how to program it in Arduino, we'll test the single application of the rotary encoder, we'll also show you how to use the encoder to increase the brightness of an LED flash. For that example, we'll show you how to connect it, how to program it, and we'll show you how to use the encoder to increase the brightness when rotating it, as well as control it using the encoder button with a single tap, double tap, and long press. Let's go ahead and get started. So now, this rotary encoder has five pins to connect to our Arduino. So we have on the right end of the screen, we have the clock or output A, and this one is used to determine the encoder rotation. We also have then have DT, which is output B, which is you know the second output that can be used to determine encoder rotation or precision. But if used along with output A, the CLK, you can use it to determine also the direction of rotation. And that is because the output of A and B are off phased, so depending on which pulse is leading, you can know if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. And the code itself will determine it for you. But it's just good to know that you know you could run with just one if you didn't care about direction uh, or both integrated to make sure you get the right direction of motion. Then we have SW, which is essentially a pin to determine if the push button has been activated. And essentially that shaft that you see there, if you push it actually into the sensor, it will be a push button. So you can use that as well. And you can think about it as the radio in your car that if you push the button, the same one for the volume, you might be able to turn it on, you know, assuming it's it's set up that way. So you also then have BCC, which is how we power up the sensor. Uh, and you can power up anywhere between 3.3 .3 and 5 volts. And then you have ground, which you'll connect to the same ground as your Arduino. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to connect it to the Arduino. We see ground is connected to ground on the Arduino. We're connecting VCC to the 5 volt output of the Arduino. SW in this scenario for this code, the example that we're going to show, we're connecting to digital input output number 3. Then you have DT, which is output number, sorry, output B connected to digital input output number 4. And then finally CLK or output A is on digital input output number 5. Now, to run the Arduino code, for the push button on the rotary encoder, we will need to install a library. So to do that, go to sketch, then you have include library, and then you can go to manage libraries. Then you want to type button fever. And once the up list uploads, you want to click on this one, the button fever. I won't be able to install because I already have, but then you would just basically click and then click install for it. And then after it installs, you should be good to go. Now let me walk you through the Arduino code for this first example we're working on. We we'll want to make sure, as we talked before, that we include the library for BF button, which is for button fever. You'll then define the pins that are the same ones we shown in the breadboard diagrams, so are 3, 4, and 5, for the push button, and then for outputs A and B in your encoder. We'll then go ahead and set some references for a counter and an angle, and then we'll define a few variables. And then after this, we will define this function, which is for detection of single press, double press, and long press on your push button within the encoder. Then we'll go into the setup. And then this will be the main code, which pretty much reads the button, as well as keeps track of the encoder code as you rotate the encoder. Now, if you want a simple way of getting this code, please go to DIY Engineer specifically to the link that I'll show in the description, and you can easily get to the code. So there's the code I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Pretty much you'll have it here. Slightly below the instructions where I show you how to install the button fever library. And here in the Arduino code example one, you can just copy and paste this code, put it in your Arduino, and then you're ready to run. At this point, all we have to do is go ahead and click upload. Now that we're done uploading, we can go ahead and open the serial monitor and check out the output. So we can see how if we go ahead and rotate, encoder we go towards the negative numbers all the way to negative 100 then if we spin it back we get to positive 100 and then if I tap the push button once get a single push if 
I double tap it, we get a double push. And then if I do a long press, we get a long push. Now, let's take a look at the breadboard diagram for our application of LED brightness control with our digital rotary encoder. So, we see that pretty much we kept everything the same except now we have an output on digital input output number 6 which goes into this resistor which is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and then that fits into the base of this NPN transistor which is a 2N2222 and you can watch videos that I'll show here in the top right that go into more detail of, of the circuit and how to use this but in this case we're just going to control it with the encoder but feel free to watch those other videos as well so we'll go ahead and feed into or connect to the base of this transistor which will then allow flow of current between the emitter and the collector so we then have this 12 volt power supply which in the positive will connect to the led goes to then the negative of the led and the negative of the led goes into the collector of this 2n2222 transistor which then exits here on the emitter which then goes to the ground and closes the loop with the power supply and then of course the base which will like we talked before we'll send a signal to allow this transistor to operate as a switch, essentially, you know, controlling whether or not we turn on the LED. We will also be throttling the brightness and we'll do this with this output here, which will act as a PWM signal, pretty much regulating the voltage all the way from zero to five volts. And then that voltage here will drive the current, right? Because the current is gonna be equal to V over R. And then that current will then be feeding into the base, which will then in turn determine the brightness of our LED. And then we'll also use some functions with the push button. We'll cover that in our example. Now let's take a look at the Arduino code for this example of LED brightness control. We'll have same setup as before. One thing is we do add the definition of the pin for the LED PWM signal to control the brightness over here. We will actually add what happens to the counter um, under single push, double push, and long push. We do define the LED as an output. And then here, instead of going from negative 100 to 100, we go from 0 to 255, which is standard for the PWM control. And then of course, here we have analog right LED pin counter. Now let's go ahead and run the code. Now we can go ahead and start testing. Now before we go to the example, remember that you can go ahead and take the code from DIYengineers.com and the blog post left in the description. Just scroll down to the section on example number two and go to Arduino code and example number two. And all you got to do is, you know, copy and paste this and put it in your code. So now let's go ahead and jump to the example. So now we can go ahead and see what happens when we rotate the encoder as well as push the button with single tap, double tap, or long press. So if I rotate it in one direction, nothing happens because that's to lower the brightness. If I do the other direction, you can see that the LED starts to get brighter and brighter. Until we max out. Then what happens if I do a long press? You can see it turns off. What if I do a single tap? It goes back to max brightness. And if I do a double tap, it goes for a predefined low brightness that I set up in the code. So again, long tap, turns it off, single tap, puts it as a max brightness, double tap, low brightness. And we can go back from low brightness to max brightness, max brightness to low, back, turn off, low brightness, etc. And then we can also from here just rotate the knob to lower or increase the brightness. So that's the example guys. Hey, if you like this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.